Hi everyone, it's really good to see you again and in today's episode I'm going to share with you a really simple but delicious salad that is just perfect for these summer days of dining outside and then I'm going to take you along to a new plant store in Edinburgh called Grow Urban to give you a little bit of a tour and share some top tips that I learned from the plant gurus who work there about how best to take care of your plants. At the very end of this video I've got something to tell you so stick around, I hope you enjoy this episode, let me know what you think in the comments, take care. Now salads are one of my favourite foods, I probably eat a salad most days and I especially love them during the summer months when you can just sit outside with a nice glass of wine. For me there's nothing better than that. So the salad that I'm going to share with you today, I got the recipe from House and Garden magazine. I have tried this one before and I can tell you it's very delicious, super easy. All we do is we roast some aubergine and courgette, then I've toasted some nuts here. Now we're going to make the dressing, we have some lettuce, we put it all together and that is a very simple easy salad that is extremely satisfying. So let's make this dressing, I've got this little bowl here, so in here I'm going to put in two tablespoons of tahini, then I've got some lemon zest, lemon juice, some plain yogurt and some garlic which I've crushed. I'm going to also add in here some salt and this recipe does call for honey too but actually I tried that and I didn't really like it with the honey. A bit too sweet for me, I'm not really into the sweet and savoury thing so I'm going to omit the honey but if you want that do add it in. And now I'm just going to stir this together and it comes together really quickly. You get this nice textured dressing from the yoghurt. It's not too thick, not too runny, perfect texture, perfect consistency for a beautiful dressing. And that is really it. You just quickly whisk this together and it comes together in seconds. So that is the dressing all ready to go, we're going to assemble everything together. Now I've chosen this nice bowl so that we can present the salad as well as it tastes. So what I'm going to do is I've got some lettuce leaves here which I have torn into pieces and washed and spun them and I'm just going to place them around the bowl to begin, not in any fancy way, probably just taking the bigger ones at the bottom so I'm just going to leaf through these, get the bigger ones spread them around the bowl to, just to cover the whole bowl and then what we'll do is layer everything else on top. With the aubergine and the courgettes I simply just slice them into one centimeter rounds and um, then I put them into a bowl with some garlic, some olive oil, some salt and pepper, stir it all around, put them onto this baking tray and then I toasted them in, I roasted them in the oven for 35 minutes, turning them halfway and it's always best to make sure that they're a little bit crispy because then you've got the texture in there that we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is just simply start layering these throughout the bowl, not in any particular way, it doesn't have to look fancy, it's just making sure probably about more so the, that you evenly distribute everything out. So that's what I'm going to do. So yes, this salad is more or less vegan if you want to have a vegan dish. The only thing that isn't vegan is the, uh, the yogurt, but you could, I guess, find a vegan version if you wanted to make it completely vegan. That's the thing with these vegan alternatives nowadays, you can get some really fantastic ones. So we're very lucky to be living in those times. <laughs> okay. Now green, as I always mention, is one of my favorite colors. So this just really fits well with my aesthetic of green. You've got lots of different shades. You've got the brightness of the lettuce and then the more darker shades in the aubergine and then also the mixture on this uh, courgette. Okay, so I'm going to get all of these in, to get all of them in. Okay, that is the last one. 
it's already looking pretty nice in here again all the colors with this bowl it's pretty handsome to finish i'm drizzling the dressing over the salad and then sprinkling over the nuts I toasted the nuts in a pan with a teaspoon of sugar, some garlic and olive oil for about two to three minutes. They add such an interesting flavor and texture to this salad. When it comes to wine, I am definitely no expert. I remember in my early 20s when I first started shopping for wine and my tactic was just to choose the best looking bottle. Nowadays, I have developed a taste for what I like and what I don't, but I tend to stick to the same choices. Now, I want to tell you about Bright Sellers, a great solution to this problem. Bright Sellers is an online subscription service which is perfect if you want to expand your taste buds and start to enjoy a wider variety of wine. The way it works is that you hop onto their website, take the quiz, and then the clever algorithms will match you with wines that you're guaranteed to love based on your taste profile. The good thing is, the more you use the service and give feedback on your wine, the better your matches will get month after month. And now that is the kind of research that I am more than happy to take part in. The subscription is totally flexible so that if you decide you want to skip a month, you can. And if you want to swap a wine, the Bright Sellers team can assist with that too. Also, if there happens to be a wine that you don't particularly love, Bright Sellers will send you a replacement in your next box. You know how I always try to do my best by the environment? Well, this service is completely sustainable with the recyclable materials and packaging. A real bonus to this already amazing concept. So, if you would like to learn more about this, there is a link at the top of the comment section where you can receive 60% off your first four bottles. Cheers. Grow Urban is a new plant store here in Edinburgh, owned by my friend and neighbour Graham. After a very successful start, this is the second branch of Grow Urban in Edinburgh, and it's easy to see why people love coming here to buy their plants. So this is my favourite part of the shop because it has been designed to look like a potting shed. Now, for my dream house that I've talked about before, one of the things that I would love to have is my own potting shed. A place where you can put all of your pots, flowers and plants and just potter around and really enjoy the simple things of life. So this is pretty close to what I would have for a dream potting shed. These are actually my favourite pots and they're by a company called Berg's Potter and I just love these. They're made really beautifully. They've got this scalloped edge. They come in different colours other than grey, if you're not really into grey, I always have the terracotta pots. And the thing about them is that they are already aged, so you remember when I did a video about how to age terracotta pots? These are already aged, they've got the age in the stone, so that's why I really like them. They look very unique and individual, beautiful pots. So now I'm going to give you a few tips about how to best care for your plant. As I've been very honest about in other videos, I'm not the best when it comes to plants, but with the tips that I've learned here, my plants are actually thriving and surviving. I've had a fern for many months and it's beautiful, still looks gorgeous, so I'm doing something right. So the first thing that you need to do when taking care of your plant is to check if it needs to be watered. And the way that you do that is, before you even take it out of its pot, you can just put your finger inside the soil. If you want to get your finger here and probably put in the first inch of your finger into the soil, and if it feels really dry, then you need to water the plant. But if it still feels moist, then it's fine. It doesn't need watering. So this plant here is watered very well. It doesn't need any water. So I'm not going to be showing you how to water it today. I'm just going to be telling you how to water it. I don't want to kill this plant. So if it needs watering, what you do is it's best to take it out of its decorative pot. Even though some of these pots do have 
the holes in the bottom so that water can come out. It's always best to take it out of the pot so that um, we can let it drain properly. So what you would do if it needs to be watered is take your watering can and you want to just start watering it around the edges, letting it soak through. And then if you have like a, a tray underneath or if you do it over the sink, when it starts to drip through, that is what you're looking for. So you want to allow the water to soak through to the soil properly before you move on. So what you would do is just keep watering it, watering it round, making sure that you're getting all of the soil and then letting it drip through. And what you will feel is that when it needs to be watered, it will be very light and as the water starts to soak through it will start to feel heavier and that's when you know that the, uh, the plant is properly watered. Now with my fern I usually water it about twice a week um, and it's going pretty well so yeah you don't really need to be fussing over it every single day just again feel with your finger how moist or dry the soil is and that's a great indication of when you, whether you need to water it or not. So what you would do is you would leave the plant to drain just for about 10 minutes and then when you pick it up once if the water stopped dripping out you know that that is it done and then you would put it back into the decorative pot. For extra points for taking care of your fern or any other plant especially ones that like humidity it's always a good idea to mist them. So I'm going to mist this I've got this little bottle here glass bottle and just slightly misting it all around and when you mist you should always do it during the daytime never in the evening because it's too cool it needs to be it needs to be misted when there's a lot of humidity in the air so the daytime is best time to do that before i leave today i just wanted to say a few words firstly i just want to thank you all for the most wonderful response to my last video about coming out trolls and everything else that i wanted to talk about um, at the time of filming now, it's had about 115,000 views, which is pretty crazy for the first few days. But more importantly, I think that if any young person watched that video who is perhaps going through some of the things that I went through, they will be able to see that thousands of people are very good people and really there's a lot of support out there. And if there are any, a few bullies, they are really in the minority. So thank you everyone for doing that, for sharing your comments and responses. It's nice for me to read them, but it's also very nice for me to know that they're helping so many people, which is, I'm sure is what is gonna happen with that video. The second thing that I wanna share with you is that I have decided that I'm going to move house. So this was kind of a difficult de decision for me. My lease expires very soon, so I had to kind of make a quick snap decision, more or less, about whether I was going to do this or not. But I think that it is the right time for a few reasons. The first reason is that this flat is a little bit too small. I know that this room that I'm standing in has high ceilings and it's quite big. The bedroom's also big and so is the kitchen. But being so far away from family and some of my friends from home, when people want to come and stay here, they're not able to stay in this flat because it's one bedroom. And actually, I've got a little bit of a confession. When I moved to Edinburgh, one of the things that my mom said was, oh my gosh, you're going to be so far away. We're never going to see you. And I said, don't worry, I'll get a two bedroom flat. So I never actually told my mum that I've been living in a one bedroom flat because I was too scared of the reaction. But because of the pandemic, she hasn't been able to travel here. So it's worked out fine. So mum, I'm really sorry that you're finding this out this way. But yes, I am in a one bedroom flat, but I'm going to rectify that situation. So yes, one of the main reasons for me moving is so that I can have an extra bedroom for guests to come over and stay and also a lot more storage space. Here I'm literally using every nook, cranny, cupboard to fill, to fill out the things that I need to put away so I need more space. So I've decided that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move house. There's also one other reason why I decided to move house. Now I've talked about in the past, people have asked me about when people walk past these windows, don't I feel like uh, on show or exposed? And I did say that it doesn't really bother me because I know that this is a townhouse, people like to look in the window and that is what I expected when I moved here. But actually in the last few months, what has been happening is people have been finding out where I live. So. And I didn't realize how easy it was to do that. I thought that I'd taken all of my uh, personal details off 
Google or any other search engine. But actually there are other ways that I found that people have found me. So one of the ways is that when I'm filming in this room and facing this towards the window, you can actually see a yellow door which is opposite uh, this house. So what people do is they search for yellow door Edinburgh and it's very easy then to find out where this street is. So people are sending not anything horrible, I'm getting nice letters, some people have sent flowers, but it just kind of concerns me that uh, it's so easy to find out where I live. So another reason for me moving is that I can be a little bit more anonymous and try and keep my address private. So that is the second reason. But yes, I'm very excited to move. I'm not really looking forward to packing up. That is the worst part and moving in. But I am excited for a new start. And I think it will also provide a lot of content, which is always a good thing because I spend, as you know, months in advance planning content. So I think moving house, sharing that journey, decorating, placing furniture, hanging pictures, all the things that I'm sure you're very interested in will provide lots of content for us to enjoy. So I think it is going to be a good thing, a new start. I really enjoy living in this flat. It's been the kind of centre of my YouTube journey where I've gotten to know everybody out there and the way you've got to know me. So I will have very good memories of this place. But when I decide to do something, I usually do it. So I'm ready and my mind is in that place where I'm ready to go. So yeah, I'm going to move. I'm not going to be moving too far. I'm definitely staying in this kind of area. I've got lots of friends here, so I don't want to go too far. So yeah, I'm on the hunt. I have got one place that I've already seen. I put an offer in, I'm waiting to hear, and I've got one that I'm going to see tomorrow. So hopefully once I have had an offer accepted on any of these places, I'll be able to share the place, what it looks like now before I move in, so that you can uh, get a little bit more insight. So hopefully you will be able to do that very soon. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know that it was a bit of a mishmash of different things, but I kind of wanted to do a little vlog of the things that I've been getting up to in the last few days, so I thought that was a nice thing to do. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, have a really great weekend and a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.